Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to plan for Medicare enrollment. So in this uh video, I'm show you example kind of is a role map for a person in my example. So because the Medicare uh enrollment is quite complicated, if you a situation is a little um you know different. Let's say you delay your retirement, delay your social security benefits. In this situation, you have to uh enroll in the Medicare uh different parts by yourself. So if you do it wrong, then uh there are penalties and the potential uh med uh all those premiums increase. And uh, so just uh, it's very complicated. So I'm just uh, show you a situation. Then you, you know how to how these things work together. So let's uh, see an example. John Smith will turn age sixty five in twenty twenty three. So age sixty five is very important. That's the age when you starting uh get. And you have to plan to enroll in the Medicare. So Medicare is eligible when you become age sixty five. So his birth month is December. So birth month is very important because they ah、uh, they tell you when you can enroll or、uh, in the different plan. So then. However, John plans to continue to working until his full retirement age in the September twenty twenty five, which is full retirement age, age sixty six and eight months. So this is another situation because it's delay retirement. When you continue working beyond sixty five, you can delay enroll in, uh, some. Part of the um、uh, you know Medicare, so uh that's called special enrollment. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you later. And he will start taking Social Security benefits after he retire at his full retirement age. So when you delay taking Social Security benefits, that means you. Uh, you will not be automatically enrolled in the uh Medicare, so that's another implication here. So John makes a contribution to HSA account. So when you make a contribution to HSA, so once you start enroll in the Medicare, you are no longer eligible to make a contribution into HSA. So when you gon gonna stop? So I'm gonna show you. John's annual income is about one hundred seventy thousand dollar. So when your income is above certain amount, uh, your premium, Part B premium, Part D premium will increase. So it's very important for you to manage those um your income. Then try to avoid all those premium increase. So in John's situation, how should he enroll in his Medicare? Okay, first is, uh, as I said before, because he is not taking his Social Security benefit until he retires, which is a after age sixty five. He will not be automatically enrolled in the Medicare, so he has to sign up Medicare during the initial enrollment period, and the special enrollment period. So, um, okay. Before we uh start uh getting into the enroll period, so we I just want to show you. Different parts of the Medicare. So this is uh this is I taken uh taken this from the Medicare and the you for twenty twenty uh twenty twenty two, the official U S government Medicare handbook. So here you can see those original Medicare, 
than Medicare of the Bandage Plan. So you have to enroll from this part. So once you enroll in this part, you can switch to part C later. So you don't need to worry about this now. So you just have to focus on the part A, part B, and the part D, and have some Medicaid. So you need to uh, focus on this one. So you can see original Medicare, including Medicare Part A is hospital insurance. Part B is Medicare insurance. You can join the separate Medicare drug plan to get the Medicare drug coverage Part D. Uh, you can uh, use the doctor or hospital tax Medicare anywhere in the U.S. Help pay your out-pocket for the original Medicare, like a 20% coinsurance. So then you have a supplement uh, Medicare uh, part. So this is very important too. So because uh, Medicare, they may only offer you, uh, you know, in those special enrollment period. So you can get a lower premium and the more options. So that's very important that you enroll during those period. If you now enroll in the Medigap and you do it later, you may not eligible. Uh, so that's a guaranteed period for you eligibility. So that's something you need to know. Then sign up for Part A. Part A just want you know this is premium free. Uh, for John Smith's situation, he has been working for many years. Then he is fully insured, which is he has more than 40 credit uh, he pay into the Social Security Medicare. So he is fully insured. So that way he is eligible for Part A premium free. He is not required to pay the premium. Otherwise, the premium for Part A is over 400. I believe it's 470 uh, dollar per month. So anyway, so in John Smith's situation, the premium is free on the Part A initial enrollment period. He should sign up for Part A. So understand the initial uh, period. The initial enrollment period is the first chance to enroll in the Medicare. And it's three months before the 65th uh, birthday month. During the both months, three months after the both months, for total seven months. You can see it's three months before, one month during, three months after. So total is seven months. So John sign up. Uh, John should sign up for the Medicare Part A during the initial enrollment period, because the Part A is free. So you sign up, you don't need to pay their, uh, pay their uh premium. So you don't sign up for Part B because you are covered under your uh employer plan. So Part B, you have to pay the premium. So you don't sign up for Part B. You only sign up for Part A during this period. The first, uh, for first chance for John to enroll in the Medicare is September 20, uh, 23, three months before. And he has a seven months through March 2024 20, to be enrolled. So if he enrolls in the September, October, November, the coverage will start the first day of December 2023, his birth month. If he enrolls in the December, January, February, March, uh, the, the coverage will start the first day of the January, February, March, April uh, 2024, respectively. The first day of the month following the date of the enrollment. You can see when you enroll, when you get coverage. So that's the same thing. So John should enroll in Part A during this seven months window initial enrollment period. 
So that was an implication here. Uh, so John is uh, make a contribution to his HSA. So when he make a contribution to HSA, then he enroll in the Part A. He will not eligible to uh, to make a contribution. Say you are not eligible to make a contribution to an HSA after you have Medicare. To avoid a tax penalty, you shouldn't make your last HSA contribution the month before your Part A coverage begins. The premium Part A coverage uh, begins six months before a month you apply for the Medicare. So, however, you can see if you apply for the Medicare during your initial enrollment period, doing the two months after your initial period ends, you shouldn't make your last HSA contribution the month before you turn uh, 65. So basically, you can see before John's seven months initial, uh, initial enrollment period. So during this initial period, you make a, uh, you apply for the Medicare. Uh, so you are good if you just uh, stop, uh, make a contribution, uh, the month before you turn to sixty five. He turned sixty five in uh December. Uh, 2023. So he should stop. He must stop making HSA contribution in November 2023. If he enrolled in the Part A during the seven months initial enrollment. So it's very, very important because otherwise you, are, you, you make a, a non-qualified contribution to HSA, you have to take it out. Then you when you take it out, then you have a, a penalty, all this stuff. So uh, just to make sure, November 2023, that's the month you will not make the contribution to the HSA. Medicare, uh, Medicare special enrollment. So special enrollment period uh, is clients who remain um, Employee past the age of 65 may still enroll in Part A uh, when it becomes the age of 65. So anyway, so here I'm just uh, saying, so because the, the just uh, said you can enroll in Part A, then you should delay the, uh, delay the Part B. They should enroll in Part B when they decide to retire. So to enroll in the Medicare uh, plan without penalty, a client should have the eight months beginning with the early of the first four months of the enrollment ending and the health coverage through uh, the employer ending. The special enrollment period allows clients to continue work past the age 65. Then upon retiring and decide to leave their employee-based health plan, they can then sign up for the Part B or Part C then obtain a uh, guarantee issue the Medicare supplement uh, plan. So you can see here, so basically it says if you continue working uh, beyond age 65, so then you, um, so when you stop working, so you will have an eight month window to enroll in the Part B uh, or Part C. So if you are not, during this eight months window, you are now enrolling. There will be a ten percent penalty each year for you not enroll in the Part B. So here is the net, uh, the Part B net enrollment penalty. If you don't sign up for the Part B when you are first eligible, you may have to pay a net enrollment penalty for as long as you have a Part B. This is a permanent say. Once you subject ten percent penalty, let's say your ten percent penalty is, uh, you know, hundred dollar per month. This hundred dollar per month will be with you for the uh, rest of your retirement as long as you are covered on the Part B. You can see this. So your monthly Part B premium may go up ten percent for four twelve months in the period that you could have. Uh, had a Part B, but you did not enroll, so you can see this. 
So here's the example tell you. So basically, Mr. Smith's <coughs> initial enrollment period ended in the December 2018. He waited to enroll in the puppy until March <coughs> 2021. So during the general uh, enrollment period, so the coverage begins January 1st, 2021. So you can see this total is 27 months, but they only do two, four, 12 months period, which is 20% penalty. So in 2021, your, uh, your premium for the Part B monthly is 148 and 50 cents. So your 20% penalty, so your premium going to increase to this amount. And uh, your premium 20% uh, increase will stay with you for the rest of your retirement. So here is the, uh, here is the Part B premium. So premium, you can see the base premium standard is uh, one hundred forty-eight dollar and fifty cents per month. You can see yes, the base answer two years ago, uh, for twenty twenty-one is based on two thousand nineteen. Your, uh, income. You are modify adjust gross income MAGI. Let's say you are joint the uh, tax return. If you are joint the return is lower than one hundred seventy six thousand dollar, so you can just pay base premium one hundred forty eight fifty cents per month. So if you are higher than this, you can see your premium gonna increase to two hundred and seven. Uh, this is two hundred and seven dollar, right? So this is increase if higher than even than this. So two hundred ninety seven dollar. So higher than this, then you are uh, is three hundred eighty six. So all the way can increase to five hundred and four, uh, dollar per month. You can see the cream premium will increase based on your, uh, based on your two year ago the two year prior you can the uh the year of the premium so uh, basically say for 2021 premium is based on 2019 annual income so for if john enroll in the part b in 2025 his income in 2023 will be used to determine in 2025 part b premium so you should try to manage your uh income in you know 2023 uh 2024 so not selling any appreciated stocks and the mutual funds uh do not do any rough conversion because it will increase your income so do not take any social security benefits you can try to delay uh, any other benefits then you can sell some um you know stocks or mutual funds at a loss to offset to reduce your MAGI. Then talk about part D. So part D is for your uh, drug cover. This is for your drug coverage. So part D also have a late enrollment. So the net enrollment penalty is the amount that is permanent added to your medical drug coverage premium. You may owe a late enrollment penalty if at any time after your initial enrollment period is over, there's a period of 36 uh, or more days in a row when you do not have a Medicare drug coverage and other credible prescription drug coverage. You will generally have to pay the penalty permanently for as long as you have a Medicare drug coverage. You can see, so it's not the uh, you know uh, the penalty just for one year or two years. It's for the rest of your retirement. So you can see, you know, just uh, you know for the um, this is they give you this example. So basically is for one person for each month you delay so even you let's just say you just uh, ten dollar per month 
so you can see, uh, you know how many how many years for your ten dollar per month. You can see if you have um, you know, for your rest of your retirement. So those things it will increase permanently. It's not just for one year or two year. So, uh, that's something you need to know. Then the Part D premium. So also Part D premium is also subject to the uh, income test. So if your income is more than uh, you know certain amount, your premium will be increased as well. So you can see additional monthly amount will be added to your premium Part D premium. So that's just something uh, you need to manage your income try to avoid to get in this bracket subject to the premium increase so medic medicare medicap so basically here's time buy a policy when you are first eligible so the best time when you buy a medicare policy is during the six months medicare open enrollment period you generally will get better p price and more choice among the policy during the time you can buy the Medicaid uh, policy sold in the state. Even you have a health problem, the period automatically starts the first month you have the Medicare Part B. So that's you. That's the same thing you, you, you need to pay attention because once you enroll in Part B, you have a six months open enrollment window this doing the this six months doesn't matter how is it, if you are sick if you have whatever bad health the uh the medicare provider they cannot reject you so they have to enroll you in you in the medicare so it's a benefit to you otherwise after this six months window you have to go through underwriting. Then you, if you go through underwriting, then you, your premium uh, may be increased. So then you may have less uh, options. So that is very, very important for you to enroll in the Medicare within the six months window after you enrolled in the Part B. So that's very important. So that's Medigap. They have a uh, ten this plan. You can choose it from this ten. So here you can just decide what do they cover. They cover the Medicare Part A. So Medicare Part A basically they have the coinsurance. They have deductibles. Part B you have a twenty percent coinsurance. All those things. So any gap that they would uh, cover for you. So you would uh, can see the one hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So D is a good choice. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, that's it. Once you uh you that's it. What you you should shop for. So this one just that you choose one of these. So once you choose one, you cannot change it later. So it's very important you do the research before. Then uh, make the decisions within the six months window. Okay, to summarize that Medicare plan for John, for John's situation, he needs to do in November twenty twenty three, which is the initial enrollment. And uh, before the uh, doing the initial enrollment, so first thing he sh should do, he should stop making the contribution to the HSA so to avoid any penalty so in November November 2023 he stopped making HSA contribution on December 2023 uh, so he needs to sign up the part A part A premium is free so this is doing his that's his birth month he can sign up for the part A during the initial enrollment which is seven months window, but this is uh, the birth month you can sign up in for the Part A in your birth month when you turn age 65. So then in, in the year 2023, year 2024, because you are still working, 
So you still earn income, your high earner income. So you need to manage your income because those income can impact the premium you're gonna pay on the Part B, Part D. Uh, later when you uh enroll in the Medicare. So that's why. So in the year 2023, 2024, keep the MAGI modified. Uh, adjustment gross income low. Try to sell the stock at a loss. Then not doing uh, uh any in com rough conversions. Then delay any other benefits. Then if you start business, that was a business loss. So gonna reduce your MAGI. High MAGI will increase your Part B and the Part D premium. So that's very important. So then September. Uh, 2025. So you let's just say you retire in September 2025 because that's your full retirement age uh, months. So let's just say you retire in that month. So once you retire, the following month, just in the following month, although you have an eight months window, but you should do it in the following months. Sign up for the Part B. Uh, then you know sign up Part D. Then sign up for the Medicare plan. Plan you can choose the Plan D. Just to keep in mind Part B. If you late, if you late, you cannot be sign sign up late for Part B and Part D because that was a permanent late uh enrollment penalty. Part B is ten percent per year. Part D is 1% per month. 